Hi guys, this is Nikki. It's Face Illustrator, and we're happy to share today SE, the Peranakan version of Tencent. You may or may not have heard this company, but I'm sure that their products, you definitely have been hearing them. So let's start. Uh, before we begin, this is a free Zoom class every Friday, 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. You are encouraged to join awesome10x.com. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, just hit the like button and get notified for every new video that we come out. Okay, thanks again, guys. So let's discuss SE. SE is C Limited and their tagline is Connecting the Dots. Later on, you will know why their tagline is Connecting the Dots. So they are present in seven countries. Vietnam, Sinchao, Indonesia, hello, Singapore, hello, Malaysia, Apakabar, Thailand, I don't know how to speak that, Taiwan, Ni Hao, Philippines, kumusta ka? So it's seven primary markets. They are very famous in their digital entertainment, that's gaming and esports, digital e-commerce, digital payments, and I put an asterisk, healthcare, as they are trying to enter that space nowadays. So you probably have heard their names. Shopee, Garena, Airpay, it's not famous in the Philippines, but it is famous in Indonesia and Thailand. So they're primarily in seven Southeast Asian markets are an emerging market stock. Take note that the Southeast Asian penetration rate is less than one for e-commerce. So um, let's take a look in Vietnam. I've been reading an article that says there are four factors that turns Vietnam into Southeast Asia's next growth story. First, the macro. Uh, take note that Vietnam, just three decades ago, 30 years ago, the country was the poorest in the world, GDP only about $100, 70% of the population living in poverty. Now, thanks to reforms by their government, Doi Moi, introduced in 1986, Vietnam has already become a middle-class country, accelerating GDP growth rate of 6.9%, clocking in 7% in 2018, with 95.5 million people, Vietnam boasts not only the third largest population in Southeast Asia, but also a very young, dynamic one under the age of 35. Sounds like the Philippines, no? So levels of the disposable income have never been higher. Internet and mobile adoption has been very ubiquitous, meaning very common among its consumer base. Uh, in a 2019 CIA report, Google, Temasek, Bain and Company said Vietnam has seen the third most funding in Southeast Asia after Singapore and Indonesia, having attracted over a billion dollar funds over the last few years. Their internet economy expanded by 38% on an annualized basis since 2015, far more quickly with the exception of Indonesia, and is now setting in reaching $12 billion of 5% of its GDP in 2019. Now, this is the classic stereotype of Southeast Asian startups. It's headquartered in Singapore for tax purposes. They target Indonesia because Indonesia is the largest population in Southeast Asia with more than 300 million uh, uh, Asians. They have designers in Thailand, customer service in the Philippines, engineers in Vietnam. Now, it's a gross oversimplification, but you could see that in the Southeast Asian market, Vietnam has one of the cheapest laborers in IT and engineering, and people go to Vietnam for engineers. Uh, now, that's a sad thing. No? The Philippines is famous in only BPOs, which is customer service. But yeah, this is a gross oversimplification, but it is how, how most uh, technology companies nowadays view a company. So Vietnam's heavy investment in STEM, meaning science, technology, engineering, and math, has really been done in the last 15 years, improve internet connectivity, young low-cost workforce. So uh, this has really thrived for IT industry. 
Vietnam is now home to 30,000 IT companies. They have 80,000 IT graduates a year from universities of Vietnam's Ministry of Science and Technology. They've already usurped China as Japan's second largest software outsourcing partner behind India and houses substantial research and development from the likes of IBM, Intel, Oracle, Samsung, and Grab. Ravi, when I, need, when I read this, I feel parang shit, kaya, kaya din to ng Philippines. Pero let's try, okay? The, the country is producing a legion of skilled developers. So they call, the, they call some of the best uh, Asian startups sea turtles. They're called Haikwe in Taiwan. In the Philippines, they call them Balikbayan. In Vietnam, they call them Viet Q. These sea turtles typically leave, live overseas, typically in USA or some Western country, and they go back home to the Philippines or to their hometown to work and start their own businesses. Now, these Balikbayans are a primary driver of value creation for the developed markets due to their experiences gained, best practices learned, network accumulated from all the world's leading universities. They have formed their own unicorns, uh, some of which example grabs Anthony Tan for Malaysia, Gojek's Nadia Makarim, Traveloka's Ferry Onardi. They all studied in Harvard. Uh, Vietnam so far has these uh, tech unicorns. You have Son, founder of Tiki.vn, Hailin Tran, founder of Sendo, from Na Na who studied in Nanyang, which is in Singapore. Badiap Nguyen, founder of Momo. It's a certain, ano, it's a wallet. Uh, Tuan Pham. So these are like Vietnam's current startup hall of famers. I have yet to really hear of Philippine startup founders. Pero yung Canva is actually, uh, Canva is something that very famous in uh, worldwide. I like it. It's actually uh, a Filipino. So some of the founders of Canva is Filipino. That's something that we, we want to share. Anyway, this is the topic of SE. Homegrown ecosystem, no? Uh, just wanted to share that uh, Vietnam has yet to produce a regional success like, like at the, of the likes of Grab or Shopee. However, um, it's growing. I wanted to share how Vietnam is doing because we're talking about Southeast Asia. So anyway, do you want to invest in countries that have 1% to 2%? Of course, this is pre-COVID, no? Pre-COVID, the Western countries would have 1% to 2% GDP growth. The Southeast Asia, meaning ASEAN, would have growth of 6 to 8%. So the question is, do you want to invest in Southeast Asia consisting of Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, Taiwan, in addition to Singapore? All told, that's 600 million souls living in this neighborhood. Now, e-commerce penetration in this area is materially below global averages in almost all Shopee's markets, but e-commerce and engagement in Indonesia, Shopee's current largest market, is representing almost half of the gross merchandise value, the highest in the world. Now, the gross merchandise value of the internet economy is just 2.8% of the entire Southeast Asia's GDP in 2018. This is 100% higher three years ago from 1.3%, and it is pro uh, projected to grow 8% by 2025. Because of COVID, maybe that 8% growth, 8% uh, projection of GDP could be 10 to 20% by 2025. So Southeast Asia is almost 10 years behind the USA, in which gross merchandise value of the internet economy was 6.5% in 2016. Even until now, um, I took a look, para Amazon is just 15% of the total uh, uh, retail transaction in USA, which made Shopify another um, competition of Amazon grow strongly. In fact, um, we talked about Shopify in one of our deep dives. Uh, in one of our classes, I talked about Shopify's ascent from 18 to $700 in just uh, five years, uh, the Amazon of small business. Um, take a look at SE. SE today has a market cap of $28.5 billion. Current price is $60. This is six times from its lows in three years. Shopee, in, uh, Shopee Garena uh, listed in the market in New York Stock Exchange October 2017. And it went from $10 to $60. This is the chart. It actually started um, IPO ng start cha at 16. They got sold down. Uh, it load, it went as low as $10, went as high as 16, double retest. The third retest at 16, the red direction at 16, all the way to 60. In this time of COVID of March, it briefly fell around 36. Pero 36 is still higher than 2019 high. Uh, so that that's still going all-time highs. So now let's explain why C-Limited 
went from 10 to 60 and can it go $100? Can it go $200? Should I buy at $50? Can it fall even at 50? That's the question. Yung, yung part na hindi na basa about Vietnam, they started in agrarian and then they're going IT. So I just wanted to share na how Vietnam transformed their economy is something that's really impressive and I want every Filipino just to know about that. Now let's talk about SE. Hmm, sana mag-load na to. Why is it not loading? Anyway, um, di bale. Ganito. Can you see? Kahit na hindi naka-present, hopefully nakita. Okay, so, um, see, full year 2019 earnings update, no? So, from full year 2018 to full year 2019, the sales revenues of C Limited went from a billion to $3 billion with gross profit from $14 million to $600 million. That's a 40x move uh, in terms of profits. And that's a triple in terms of sales. Ganito siya, no? So, ito yung uh, trajectory ng company. Shopee and Garena, that's the two main plays. Um, the main play e-commerce has been growing 5% on their uh, adjusted revenue of total gross merchandise value. Uh, so far, the revenues in Shopee has grown from $300 million to $900 million in a single year, from 600, $600 million gross orders to 1.2 billion gross orders. Uh, this is just one year, no? Wala pa tong COVID numbers. We don't have the COVID numbers yet from SE. We'll, we'll get to know a few weeks from now. I think Shopee is expected to report their earnings on... May 13, sakto, May 13 is next week. Okay, so next week yung earnings niyan. Garena Digital Entertainment growing 167% from $700 million to $1.8 billion. Digital Entertainment, uh, EBITDA is a billion dollars from $300 million to a billion dollars. So lahat dyan triple digit when it comes to sales and earnings. Now, who is the founder of this marvelous company? Sana mag-work na to. Okay, yan. Kita niyo na. Okay, Forrest Lee. He's actually just 42 years old. He's very, very young. He is a Chinese, uh, Singaporean billionaire businessman. Chinese born. He's founder of Shopee and Garena. He earned his degree in engineering from Shanghai Tiao Tong University. He took an MBA from Stanford Graduate School of Business. In fact, in year 2006, 2005, he was one of the only four students from China to get a Stanford MBA. That means that Forrest Lee is a smart guy. Now, how did he get his MBA? He, was, uh, he took a $120,000 bank loan and... Um, he took to heart the Steve Jobs commencement speech year 2005, diba? Year 2005, if you remember that Stanford speech, he was one of the students there who listened to Steve Jobs deliver that epic commencement address. Do you remember that? Never know when the time comes to connect the dots. You remember that? Okay, connecting the dots, kaya forest, please, diba? Okay, so um, this is something that you might need to learn on. No? Year 2015, uh, being inspired is one thing, but Forrest Lee proved himself. One decade on from listening to Steve Jobs in that epic Stanford speech, this young CEO, at that time he was just 26 years old, 28 years old. So uh, this young CEO at 28 years old made Garena, an online gaming darling of Southeast Asia, he branched into online payments, social networking, and now e-commerce. While still wanting more of Asia Pacific's $13 billion gaming market, Garena, uh, dur during July, which is 2015, meaning Shopee was just launched five years ago, a mobile-centric consumer marketplace. Shopee just started five years ago. Take, 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 take that into consideration. So a lot of people uh, in Stanford... Um, you know, some of them, when they finish their MBA, they work. Uh, this guy went to start his own company. So in 2009, he founded Garena. Garena became Singapore's very first billion-dollar internet company, 2009. So it, in fact, uh, this is something that you might need to know. Ontario, Canada, we like to share how some countries are really, really good. No, We, we are actually very... Uh, actually, ako personally, medyo mataas yung tingin ko sa Canada at saka sa Norway. 
sa Norway kasi the government of Norway is one of the best investors in the world. The government of Canada is also the best. Um, they've been investing in internet companies, the Tencent, the Alibaba, you name it. Now, this Canadian teacher's pension plan invested in year 2009 uh, with Garena. Um, I, will, I don't know if 2009 sila nag-invest, pero pretty early on. Siguro, I think, before pa nag-IPO. I don't know how they, they managed to get that uh, venture capitalist funding, but so far, they valued Garena at that point in time, $2.5 billion. They play, uh, it was free-to-play cult games like League of Legends. Uh, for most of you, this might be common knowledge. Who's League of Legends? It's one of the most popular MOBA, multiplayer online battle arena. FIFA Online 3, multiplayer platform Garena Plus, which is their social networking. The BTOK app, which is similar to Tinder, WhatsApp, and Facebook, just one. AirPay, which is their own system account for WeChat. That's their version of WeChat. So uh, this is him. This is Forrest Lee. He made his money, uh, of course, from uh, gaming, esports. So from gaming, five years ago, he, uh, he rolled the dice and went on from gaming to e-commerce founding Shopee. So from one investment to another. Uh, he's now, if you'll notice, 2020, he even started doing the Mark Cuban way. Kapag billionaire ka niya, may pera na to buy mga sports teams. He started buying Singapore's very first football club, Lion City. Now, um, I wanted you to know the humble beginnings of this company. No, 2009, he founded the company Garena. Uh, take note that in 2011, his annual sales was just $17 million. In four years' time, $17 million grew to $200 million. So that's almost more than 10 times diba? the sales, annual sales. They were selling virtual goods such as customized clothing, accessories a gamer can buy for his avatar. So we, we hear about people spending $8 on skins in Fortnite. Ganun din siya. That's how he made his money, virtual goods. Those, um, we talk about this a lot in our secular trend classes. We talk about, do you want to sell uh, atoms or bits? What's the difference of an atom and a, and a bit? When you, when you talk about atoms, you're, you're really selling a cup of coffee. That's an atom. But when you're talking about bits, like an avatar skin, your cost is zero, but you're selling it at $8. So that's automatic profit margin, diba? So that's how I'm talking about it. That's like 100% diretso to your uh, incremental profit line. So looking ahead, Forest Lee expects 30% growth year on year. This was 2015. His staff size went from 20 on day one to 3,000. He usually uh, just hires millennials. And he spread his uh, con company all over Southeast Asia, from Hong Kong, Taiwan. He diversified further from mobile commerce, um, from mobile gaming to mobile commerce. Garena's position is actually the best when it comes to online gaming. Um, he is usually against the likes of the biggest, such as Asia Soft in Thailand, VNG for Viet Vietnam. Um, a lot of his idol Steve Jobs. This guy really, uh, and even I would say a little bit about, a little bit resembling the way he talks, resembling Jeff Bezos. He always talks about day one, day one, being hungry, being foolish, uh, staying hungry and staying foolish. That is um, Steve Jobs' mantra. Uh, we, we're always at day one. That's a Jeff Bezos mantra. If you ever read all the Amazon shareholder, shareholder letters starting from 1997. Now, uh, Forrest Lee, the reason why he called himself Forrest Lee, just trivia, Forrest is actually Forrest Gump. He really named himself Forrest Lee. So, uh, of course, Chinese don't have English names, so they have to give themselves English names. Um, this is a guy who always knows uh, what's ahead because he doesn't want to be. Um, the Nokia of his, te because technology is fast changing, so he's always one step ahead. Or uh, you'll, you'll like this because, um, you know, uh, this guy always likes to grow. Uh, his humble beginning, his first job out of college was he was an HR recruiter for Motorola in Shanghai. So he screened hundreds of resumes. Um, so, I know, HR recruiter, and he was saying to himself, look, um, I am reading everyone's resume and I read people's uh, histories and stories and I don't know what I want my resume to be. 
in five years later, and I'm not excited about that. That's why he hedged his bets. He studied and took an MBA. He took a loan. He was one of the first four stu- uh, one of the only four students in China in that class of 2006 in Stanford Business School. Of course, that Stanford Business School investment paid handsomely for him, for both him and Garena. He really embraced everything that Stanford told him, particularly this alumni network. Now, why am, I, why am I talking about a lot about the founder? You'll notice that when I do a deep dive, I really try to study founders, whether it's Shopify's Toby Lutke, whether it's um, Spotify's Daniel Ek, whether it's URC's John Go Hongwei. We really do a deep dive even with the founders. That's really how I analyze a company. Um, this is a guy who really came from nothing. Wala nga siyang pera pang MBA. nag pa siya and now he's a billionaire. So this is really a story to really tell your children. no? Um, of course, uh, let me share to you his co-founder. Co-founder Gang Ye. Gang Ye also, uh, of course, became a billionaire. They both worked together uh, in the e-commerce firm C and the online gaming firm SE. Uh, this one is the chief operating officer. He used to work for the Economic Development Board of Singapore and palm oil major Wilmar International. Now, Gang Ye is a government employee. He became a billionaire for, uh, for riding the sensation of Free Fire. Now, for most of you, uh, you might know Free Fire. This is really the Southeast Asian Battle Royale. Ito yung parang Fortnite ng Southeast Asia. The Battle Royale or Fight to Death title distributed by C Limited ranked among the five most downloaded games on Apple and Google App Stores for three straight quarters in this year, amassing a billion dollars in revenue since launching in 2017. Of course, if you sell a billion dollars worth of uh, C-limited games such as Free Fire, that's all the way to the bank of C-limited. That's how you make money in mobile games. You, you develop a game, you sell a billion dollars, automatic if you, you, know, if you spend 100 thousand to one million to ten million dollars creating the game 990 million equals profit of course this allowed C's market value to double, to triple uh, and making the founder Gang Ye really really rich Gang Ye is uh, also young he's 39 year old uh, 2017 yeah, so he's now 41 years old so they're very young these are young yuppies they started their company 20, uh, 10 years ago 2009 11 years ago so, mga 30 years old sila when they started their internet um, businesses. Okay, um, so mga teenagers, magkakakilala na yan. Garena Free Fire, ito yun. Uh, for those who don't know what it looks like, ganyan siya. So, it, it, it's, it's similar. Uh, when I look at Garena, it's similar to mga Fortnite, Battle Royale din siya, Electronic Arts, uh, Apex Legends, uh, similar to PUBG, na Activision Blizzard. So, we really like to play games na patayan. So Free Fire really did a, did a very, very good job. Free Fire World Cup 2019. Uh, of course, Free Fire became an international sensation. And the nice thing that you have to know about C Limited is that they have the excu- exclusive license to distribute popular titles, including Call of Duty, League of Legends, FIFA Online, and Arena of Valor. The company has a partnership with Tencent under which they get a first right of refusal to distribute Tencent's popular mobile games from China. So as you could see, C Limited designated partner of Tencent. Um, hindi lang sila partner, ano pa yan, investor din si Tencent. Uh, we'll get to that. And is, uh, we'll, we'll get, I'll, I'll teach you later what, how big of a role Tencent is on C Limited. No? Parang big brother niya yan. But okay, so Garena's Free Fire, also known as Free Fire Battlegrounds, is an online multiplayer battle royale game. This was developed by 111.studio. So the difference with the Free Fire and Yuma League of Legends is that Free Fire was an internally developed game. What does this mean? Let's say you're a singer. Let's say you're si Taylor Swift. Pag you're si Taylor Swift, pag you're gumawa ng kanta mo, lahat pupunta sa'yo. Pero kapag kunwari, meron kang, um, let's say ikaw lang si Spotify, taga-license ka lang in license uh, you have an exclusive license to stream my my songs let's say stream stream mo lang si Taylor so if you only get a 5% cut of the revenue so that's how you should think about game developer versus game publisher but take note na yung mga game publishers malaki rin yung pera involved when you are the exclusive distributor let's say ako si Netflix ako yung exclusive streamer ng Money Heist so 
even if hindi ako yung, although I take money heist, parang si Netflix din kasi yung nag-invest, siya yung nag-produce din ng money heist. So, um, at least siya yung producer, hindi lang siya distributor. Mas malaki pera kung ikaw yung nag-produce, tapos ikaw din distributor. Just, just so you know the mechanics of game publishing and game development. So, of course, um, Free Fire draws over a billion dollars, making them uh, bona fide billionaires. So, of course, um, some people said, ha, ah, yung Free Fire na yan, one hit wonder lang yan. Parang sa Fortnite, one hit wonder lang yan. Of course, we know na uh, after five years, it's still growing strong. In fact, um, for the people who are very aware of the games, no, some games have about 10 to 15 years life and sobrang lakas pa rin. Um, Gran Turismo, Grand Theft Auto, uh, GTA, yung Red Dead Redemption, kakalabas lang ng Red Dead Redemption 2. Yung Call of Duty Warfare, you can see that uh, Activision Blizzard, Electronic Arts, Tencent, all the best video game world in the world have proven that when they have a hit game, make a sequel, and it's a never-ending franchise. And this is not a one-hit wonder. Making, of course, these uh, winners just billionaires, not just overnight, but long-term billionaires. Um, so it's interesting to know how they, uh, they, they came about. Pwede mo pang mabasa yan. Uh, pero yun, Garena Free Fire now has over, as of 2017, Garena Free Fire has over 450 million registered users. So that's a lot of money uh, for, let's say, $10, the for, for 450 million. So natin, just $3, no? So that's billions. Okay, so um, just so you know, ano ba yung mga na-publish na games ni Garena? So ito yung mga na-publish nilang games. Siguro pinakasikat, alam nyo na to, League of Legends, Riot Games. Ang pinakasikat, pinakasikat siguro sa Pilipinas would be Dota. Uh, Dota is uh, Death of the Death of in, the Ancients. Ano rin yan? Uh, exclusive license then distributor si, uh, si ano, exclusive distributor tong si Garena, which is si, si Limited. So right now, they are, this, uh, they are the official exclusive partner of Tencent and Activision to distribute Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG, sikat talaga yung mga patayan. So, Battle Royale, yan yung mga pinakamalakas even in COVID time. Yan. So, Garena, uh, why did we call them the pera na conversion of Tencent? Let's read from uh, their uh, Garena's president, uh, si Nash. So, he said that they are the synthesis of Tencent and Alibaba in Southeast Asia in a very hyper-local way, country by country. The company's online and mobile gaming platform, Garena Plus, and mobile social network, Detox, is similar to Tencent's QQ and WeChat. Its payment business, AirPay, and now Shopee are its answers to Alibaba's Alipay and Taobao. We really look up to these two great companies as our big brothers and role models for what, to want, for what we want to build here in this region. We've learned the recipe, but we have made it peranakan. This is our influence, and so we are the peranakan version of Tencent. Meaning, when Shopee goes to the Philippines, which they have, hindi naman si Shopee nag, nag insist na maging uh, Singaporean or maging Chinese. No, Shopee had to uh, inculcate themselves. They had to they had to get sila Ann Curtis, sila Jose Marie Chan, sila Manny Pacquiao. Basically, Shopee had to hire Filipinos to become hyper local and to be loved by Filipinos themselves. Um, just so you know, Shopee has hired all the workforce in Southeast Asia. And you can see from pictures na lahat yan millennials. Uh, SE would hire everyone below 35 because they know the trends. They know what's happening in mobile gaming, in digital commerce. Everyone in this workforce is very, very young. Now, our home, no? Our name C is in, inspired by our home, Southeast Asia and Taiwan because that's really where Forrest Lee came from. And over the next decade, and they see themselves to become, um, you know, the company that will digi digi digitally transform every community connected to the internet with almost every person holding a smartphone in their hand. So people who have smartphones, that is an interesting statistic, no? In fact, in the Philippines, just so you know, I've just read PLDT's uh, uh, report, no? There are 73 million mobile phone subscribers in PLDT alone. So 100 million Filipinos, I think the other 20 million is globe. So you can really see na, oh, 99% of the Filipinos have a smartphone. You sell something in your phone, you'll really be able to capture them. 
So that gives you a unique opportunity to touch millions of lives every day by being the region's leading internet company. Now, let's take a look at in their strategies. Reading from their 2017 annual reports, we have made a strategic decision to invest in the growth of our Shopee marketplace. Incurring sales, marketing expense in advance of our monetization efforts. We believe that taking a thoughtful approach to monetization by building our user base, increasing our engagement first will allow us to maximize our monetization in the future. Correct strategy, growth versus profitability. This is what we've seen with the likes of the best e-commerce companies that we also like. We, we've seen this happen for Shopify. We've seen this happen to Amazon. We've seen this happen to Alibaba, to Pintuoto, to JD, to Mercado Libre, to Ocado, you name it. So, is Shopee doing the right thing? Yes. It's very clear in our mind, and I'll read it to you, maximize long-term value. It becomes very clear with every passing day. Almost all of our markets are consolidating very, very quickly, and we would, more than we would have anticipated even six or nine, ago, nine months ago. Second, as a matter of principle, when given a choice to ease our spending and maintain our share and invest more heavily to expand our share, we've always chosen the latter strategy, meaning market share efforts pa rin. Reason being, we believe that investment is going to help us achieve dominance in the categories that are so important to us, the long tail categories. Now, that kind of dominance and the ability to be the go-to platform for these important and very profitable categories, as we have talked about in the past, should bring us to higher monetization levels going forward. So really, just to conclude, at the end of the day, winning a merchant or a customer today in our mind is much better than having to spend more to win them in the future. So um, you could see that the capital allocation game of Shopee is really correct. So um, they would spend 4 to $8 or even $10 to acquire you. And then because you will generate $500 worth of a, a long-term value if you would buy and sell or, you know, if you will buy from their marketplace or sell in their marketplace, desirable for everyone. So, so you can see naman the strategy is very, very uh, in sync with what we like. No? Uh, so you could see that SE is substantially owned by insiders. Uh, in the October 2017 IPO, Tencent invested 33%. And then Forrest Lee, the founder CEO, owns 31% of the business. So technically, uh, the others, uh, even sila, Gang Ye, sila, yung mga chief of operating officers, halos lahat talaga ng um, shares ng SE, uh, ang insiders talaga yung may-ari niyan. Lahat sila yung may-ari. Very, very few shares in the public. And then the other shares that are in the public, uh, you would say that um, it's going to be the institutional. It's, it's all the smart money. You can call the, all the top funds, top hedge funds in the world own SE. Uh, they all bought during the IPO. Now, not a single share, shareholder sold on the IPO. In that IPO first day, Shopee went 60% um, up, $16. Kaya nga nakita niyo sa chart, diba? 16, bumaba pa ng 10 a year after. Tapos, ang IPO kasi nito, mga 12 to $14. So, ganon. Um, yeah, I think $12. So, yon. Mm, they all actually averaged up on winners. Garena distributes mobile and uh, games in the markets. So, nung 2016, saka lang nila na develop yung Free Fire. Yon. Tapos, I think 2017. Tapos yon, it was really one of the most downloaded game in 2018. Uh, even hitting... Uh, Europe, Latin America, and Africa, even outside Southeast Asian markets. Uh, so far, as of 2019, yung data na to is from the full year 2019 annual report, Free Fire got a 60 million peak daily active users. Uh, registered was 450 million. It's already the number one most downloaded mobile game globally in the app stores, according to App Annie, app, uh, Apple App and Google Play. And uh, just recently, I took a look at uh, some data. Uh, this was just very recent, 11 hours ago, meaning kahapon lang, May 6, no, sorry, May 7, 2020. Free Fire revenue has already doubled the last 30 days. And India is already now the top grossing country, even according to this data. No weakness in Thailand, but very strong strength in India. So you could see na. Free Fire has already gone, not just from the seven Southeast Asian markets, but also exporting abroad. So talagang malakas si Shopee when it comes to gaming. Now, when you look at the Battle Royale games, no, as of September 2019, PUBG, which is Activision, we also like Activision, by the way, 
Activision, um, which owns PUBG and distributed by Shopee, by SE, is a uh, billion dollars so far. This is just September 2019. I'm pretty sure that the COVID even improved the data further. Fortnite is 750 million. Garena Free Fire is 500 million. So these are just um, the statistics as of September 2019. So you'll know na lahat ng Battle Royale games. I would say that the Filipinos worldwide, I mean, people in general always love fighting games. So, pasok siya. Multiplayer online battle arena games. Battle Royale. Now, for yung mga everyone discussing the Call of Duty League franchise, COD Mobile, Call of Duty Mobile has conquered mobile gaming market in Asia. Now, lahat ng Call of, Me Call of Duty Mobile downloads is straight held to Garena kasi Garena is the uh, distributor. They're the exclusive distributor. So Call of Duty Mobile Garena is inviting people for the biggest tournament in the history of, Garena, of, of Call of Duty with a prize pool of $65,000. Eight teams will be invited to the tournament from Thailand, Indonesia, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, and the Philippines selected through regional qualifiers. So this is mga road to Garena invitational. Meron tayong mga Garena FIFA Cup, eh, mga Garena World Cups, mga ganyan. So, ganito yan. May registration, may online qualifier, blah, blah, blah. So, it's like uh, parang Olympic Cups. Uh, parang ganon. Parang, parang ganong worldwide competition. And prizes are really, really big. So, yan. Um, then, the viewers, of course, are very, very strong. That's for the Garena side. Now, Shopee, this has always been a mobile-first approach. Five years old since 2015. For those who have been reading my thoughts, no, I've been discussing na yung Tencent WeChat. If you bought Tencent, even when they just, uh, even when they just launched WeChat, you would have 10x your money. Because Tencent launched WeChat 2000, uh, 2011. So in seven years' time, from forty dollar Hong Kong na ten cent went to four hundred dollars. So the question is, si Shopee ba kaya ba niya mag times ten? With all the secular trends that it is going into, from data that I've been studying on all the e-commerce, I'd say na uh, yes. Therefore, forty fifty dollars. If it even goes there, uh, you want to actually own it. You want to own these great companies. We we have been bullish uh, about Shopee for quite a while, but this is a deep dive. I wanted for more Filipinos to learn about, diba? Shopee is a platform for connecting buyers and sellers of long-tail products across fashion, health, beauty, home living, baby products. Shopee provides tools such as payment, logistics, fulfillment. For those who are familiar with Shopify, lahat ng ginagawa ni Shopee, classic, take the playbook, gayahin natin, let's do it in Southeast Asia. Payment, logistics, fulfillment center. Now, um, revenues of Shopee has really grown very strongly. Triple in the quarter. Losses are narrowing to $206 million. I think this was data since 2019. So, of course, AirPay is their equivalent of their WeChat. That's a digital payments provider. It is the, an e-wallet to pay for products and services. So, when you're playing in Garena, sometimes you want to pay, you use AirPay, and also in Shopee platforms. But now, it's officially called C-Money. So, uh, all three business models, digital gaming, um, e-commerce and payment platforms, this is a potential winner take most economic outcomes. So people were asking, uh, depression era, ganyan, ganyan. We were saying, you know what? There are all-time highs in, even in a depression era. That's why we were ta talking about the Don Z names. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch the other episodes that we've done. But Don Z names refers to uh, Don Z and Moses names. No? It refers to the companies that are uh, really gonna be strong even in COVID. Domino's Pizza is B, Amazon, uh, Walmart, Netflix, Zoom Video, Moses meaning Meli, Ocado, Shopee, Etsy, and Shopify. These have winner take most economic outcomes because everyone who's going digital have no choice. They have to use these platforms. Um, so yon, yan yung mga very strong segments of Shopee, uh, of, of C Limited, so just to read everything to you, um, they are the top provider of uh, digital entertainment, number one in e-commerce space within the C, no? within Southeast Asia. They are also the winner in the digital financial services segment. Now in the Philippines, I would say that 
uh, Paymaya, which is paid by, yung PLDT, ang investment comes from Alibaba. Now, yung, yung Globe na Gcash, ang investment comes from, ah, sorry, baliktad. Si Globe, ang partner si Alibaba. Kaya siya may Lazada. Kasi Lazada, kalaban niya ni Shopee. Si Tencent, ang, ang, ang panlaban ni Tencent is Shopee. Ang partner ni Tencent sa Philippines is PLDT na nagpa-power up ng Paymaya. So, clear tayo dyan. Alibaba and Tencent, mortal na magkaawa yan. Pero parehas natin sila gusto. Anyway, um, kahit na Globe and Telephone, mortal na kaaway, we also like them both. Um, anyway, sige. Napadigress tayo. But definitely, you can see that um, the winners in the digital financial services segment in the Philippines, si Globe and Tel, ang panlaban dyan. Yan yung fintech play ng Pilipinas. Paymaya and Gcash through Globe and PLTT, nagpa-power dyan is Alibaba and Tencent. So, hindi na kailangan ni Shopee kumenter sa Pilipinas. But in other markets like uh, Thailand and, um, and Indonesia, they use the AirPay. So, yun. Seeing in, uh, sorry kung yung data ko, yung iba medyo luma, no? But even in first quarter 2019, you could see that Shopee by a white margin is stronger than Lazada. So, mas hyper-focused talaga si Shopee uh, from, from, in terms of marketing. Mas, mas grabe mag-spend si Shopee. This is um, data from Indonesia. Even in the Philippines, I, I don't have the data, but I think Shopee is doing better than Lazada. So, uh, this one from the fourth quarter 2019, you could see that the revenues uh, has really grown. Tapos yan yung mga profits. Nawala na naman ng aking slide. Wait lang. So, yun. According to the price, yun nga, um, Shopee has been leading Lazada. Wait. Sana mag-show to. Please load. Okay. So, Shopee competes with Lazada. Lazada is owned by Jack Ma. Alib formerly owned by Jack Ma. Alibaba. Kasi wala na si Jack Ma sa Alibaba eh. Either way, uh, I think he's still chair, uh, he's still us, yeah, pinatalsik na siya. Anyway, Lazada's last report that annual GMV tally was just over a billion dollars for 2015. So that's not very far from Shopee's 1 and 0.15 billion. So we've seen Shopee from 1 billion to 3 billion. So grabe yung growth ng mga uh, GMV, gross merchandise valuation. Um, we see that the, yung mga 3 billion dollars in sales, Hindi pa yan, you haven't even touched the surface. One day, 500, uh, it's easy to see mga 3, mga 10 billion dollars. Kasi, I think like, uh, I've seen Shopify hit 100 billion dollars of revenue overall, gross merchandise value uh, in about 7 years. So, give it time. Give it about 5 to 7 years. Parating naman tong Pilipinas and Southeast Asia to the, to the digital world especially accelerated pa by COVID. So Alibaba is a giant with plenty of muscle. So Lazada really represents tough competition. AirPay, meanwhile, has potential, number one position in the market. It's available in Thailand, Vietnam, and Taiwan. But Sea Limited plans to expand its AirPay services to the other markets in the future. So... Um, so Shopee has been growing at a really great rate. Um, although it's negative, it's very unprofitable. They have a negative gross profit margin. They do burn a lot of cash. But I think if you have to see it, it actually comes straight out of Amazon's playbook, which is build your massive online platform. So I think that their investments are correct, even if that represents a cash burn. Why is it called a cash burn? Because they offer free shipping, they reduce the fees to subsidize all that platform activity to, of course, uh, encourage you to buy from Lazada, uh, buy from Shopee. Diba? You can see naman eh, marami silang free delivery and so forth. Now, why do we like Garena? Let's take a look. Uh, Garena is a platform. So as you know, I like platform businesses, whether that's a social media like a Facebook, platform business like a Spotify, and so forth. So. Um, why do we like platforms? Because it's actually a way for you to get users and increase the value for existing users by acquiring new users as the network grows in scale. So, nagiging sticky and the relationship turns flywheel. 
Garena's success in distributing games for the local game players has facilitated relationships with all the game developers such as Tencent, Riot Games, Electronic Arts, and PUBG. So you never know. Let's say, um, let's say may mga magagandang games na lumabas and they want to um, distribute it in the Philippines or all of Southeast Asia, most likely they're going to go to SE to list distribute that. So world class developers will uh, will will become uh, very much an exclusive partner of SE. So more games, more appealing, more stickiness. So talagang long term winner yung Garena. Of course, we also like the fact that mobile gaming is where all the growth comes from. When it comes to growth, it doesn't come from consoles because everyone has a phone. Mobile gaming is really strong. Although, syempre, the hardcore gamers will continue to buy Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony. Sony PlayStation comes out holiday as Sony PlayStation 5. We like them also. We also like them. Uh, Sony, Microsoft, and Tencent, and, and Nintendo. By the way, even if maganda yung mga um, hardcore game consoles, we still like mobile gaming growth. Why? Because this is really where the fastest growth comes from. Despite more than 60% internet penetration, Southeast Asia is still um, the largest growth when it comes to mobile gaming. Kaya nga nagkaroon ng COD Mobile, eh, Call of Duty Mobile. Kasi uh, when you're playing League of Legends, Arena of Valor, Free Fire, lahat yan nilalaro through your phone. Now you could see that the esports global audience is 44% in Asia and the rest of the world is 56%. So that's really a very, very strong market for uh, SE. Big sabihin, malakas talaga when you're playing the game, the game profile, uh, buying SE is a play on just the games, kite games lang. And also, we know esports is very much mainstream. Uh, lahat ng organized esport events, the largest leagues are coming from uh, Garena. Global sports economy was said to go, grow to a billion dollars, growing 38%. You've got media rights, tickets, merchandise, all these audiences, 400 million people. You've got Amazon-owned Twitch, attracting millions of viewers per day. So uh, those are facts, no? And uh, actually, uh, we, I, I wrote a lot about why I like the video game market for, uh, since last year. But uh, I wanted to explain that uh, it's still going to double. So um, by 2025, they are expecting the, the best people in the gaming world are expecting $300 billion plus by 2025. Now, that could be an acceleration on their part due to COVID. Pwedeng accelerated from 20, by 2025 could become by 2023. So pwedeng mas malakas pa. Positive price performance, yes. Um, we always look at esports. The, the ticker symbol of the exchange traded fund in USA is ESPO, that's ESPO. It includes development of video games, related software, streaming service, esports events. Uh, all of the revenues that come from video games and esports uh, are included in ESPO. And mobile gaming is the major driver of all the video game growth in the coming decade. So with the increase of 5G, that means that you could play better games with your phone. Uh, that means that mobile gaming platforms will do better and better. And uh, it will expand to about $100 billion by 2022, a growth of double from 2018. Uh, as you know, 2022 Asian Games esports will be an official, uh, officially on the Olympic Asian Games. No? So esports is now just uh, already an established major sport. Uh, this is uh, somewhere from Financial Times. You could see that Fortnite uh, has already topped all the, all the major sporting events from the Wimbledon to the, to the golf. Uh, the biggest winner was uh, last, last year, 2019, Fortnite winner. Kyle got $3 million for winning Fortnite. Uh, that was, of course, hosted by Epic Games. Yeah, so ni Tim Sweeney. He's a billionaire. Uh, Epic Games was bought by, uh, actually before Kobe Bryant um, sadly passed away. Just so you know, Kobe Bryant was an excellent investor. Kobe Bryant invested in Epic Games just as Fortnite was really growing. So, magaling siya. Um, ayun, wala lang. Mga trivia, trivia lang. Sige. So, malakas talaga yung games. Uh, of course, we know that uh, Activision Blizzard has a dedicated esports division. They've hired the former CEOs of ESPN and NFL Network. This shows you that esports is a mainstream sports media. Broadcasting rights deal has, has been done by Disney and ESPN for Twitch. 
sponsorship has been mainstream. In fact, this this underlined my point that I like Puma, I like uh, Nike, I I actually like both of them because of their very strong concentration in really growing the esports market and in that case also growing the esports apparel. So you'll notice na malakas talaga yung uh, the way to play esports, marami yan. Pwede yan laruin sa video games, pwede sa mga NVIDIA, pwede sa mga Activision, pwede sa Tencent, pwede dito sa Shopee, uh, pwede sa, even sa mga apparel kasi maraming sponsors yan. Of course, the employment conditions of these players are formalized. Uh, kung dati gusto mo yung anak mo maging basketball player ka, maging celebrity ka, if you're if your anak wants to be dad, gusto ko maging free fire player, gusto ko maging professional gamer, uh, of course, pwede yan. Kasi um, malaking pera in the esports. Esports is actually big enough to fill an Olympic stadium. The finals of League of Legends World Championship held in Beijing uh, was really, really big. Uh, sobrang lakas nung performance. Esports is actually, esports stadiums has happened in Korea, in uh, Beijing, um, even in Madison Square. Like if you're looking in the USA, MSG Madison Square Garden, they've devoted some funds, CapEx, to grow these Olympic stadiums for esports communities. So definitely we see esports, not just um, a small sport, but a definite demonstration that this is a mainstream sport. Nawala na naman ang aking slides. Ano ba yan? Teka lang guys. In fact, for those who want to know, no, you can go to my Medium account, medium.com slash Nikiyu, at Nikiyu. You could see that I've written about these 10x names. Um, August 5, 2019, I was along several gaming-related stocks, blah, blah, blah. So, yun. Parang, of course, uh, yeah, so you'll see yung mga growth. Malulula ka sa mga growth niyan. Um, I only have five minutes left. Okay, Dr. On Call partner with Shopee Malaysia. They're offering more COVID-19 test options to shoppers. So, di ba, I said na si Shopee, nag nagkakaroon na rin siya ng healthcare. So, we are seeing the first fruits that doctors are now on call. Uh, we're seeing this happen in USA, no? Meron tayong mga nakita like Teladoc, mga, tel mga Teladoc, mga teledentistry like Smile Direct Club, um, Livongo, with ha which handles mga diabetes uh, management, doing healthcare through uh, video video calls. Uh, we can see that is really the trend of healthcare. So this is not an uh, impossible thing. We'll see more uh, more people go meet their doctors online. So that's really something that even Amazon is pushing. Amazon Health, ni ganon siya. Uh, and CVS Healthcare. If you're looking at CVS, that is the Mercury Drugstore of. Uh, USA, CVS sticker symbol, they're also in that trajectory. So why do I like uh, Shopee? Of course, the super low, long runway. You have very low penetration rate in e-commerce and digital payment in Southeast Asia. And these have accelerated most likely in the last five weeks due to COVID. Of course, the strong esports coverage, the strong partnerships uh, with Ninja Van and Grab. I'll discuss that pa with the delivery segment. And of course, the strong management execution. Uh, as I said, I like platform businesses. Shopee has platform dynamics. The more buyers, uh, the more it attracts sellers. So they'll have more SKU variety. You can, you know, you can buy anything there in Shopee. You can even do your shopping if you want. Uh, shop for groceries there. So Shopee is the most downloaded app in the shopping category in Southeast Asia in 2018. The long tail of products provides a one-stop shop allowing the sellers to streamline the store setup, inventory, revenue management, delivery, and payment collection. Uh, so you can see that the rapid rise of Shopee over the last 10 years has not been, you know, it has nothing been short of breathtaking. But they've built a global gaming business as well as a leading regional e-commerce platform. Given that they, comp they, they operate in an emerging market and they are unprofitable, even if they're unprofitable, I know it's not for the faint of heart, but investors who are looking for growth and investing in really, really good companies should look into SE uh, and where it goes from here, no? Uh, okay, so why am I talking about Ninja Van? Ninja Van actually just got $279 million two days ago. I share this at well in my Twitter account at Faces Trader. Follow me in Twitter at Faces Trader so you could be updated with the latest stock market news. But anyway, how did you how do you add a Ninja Van to Shopee? So um I think that uh, Ninja Van is also doing well. And Ninja Van and Grab are creating the widest logistics network. So, syempre, usually, ang e-commerce, 
helping helping hand yan ng mga logistics. In fact, in China, Chao Tong has become an e-commerce giant himself because he is doing logistics. He was the largest logistics network in in ano in China. That's why it it's a question mark to me why the Philippines na mga mga malalakas sa logistics why not they just become e-commerce e-commerce, diba? Tulungan nila yung mga e-commerce giants. Anyway, so yeah, Ninja Van CEO is very young. He's actually just 31 years old. So this was an article two years ago. Now he's 33 years old. So these are really young CEOs uh, and they're very, very strong, no? Everyone's using their mobile phones. Have you ever used yung mga Lala Move, yung mga Ninja Van, yung mga... Ninja Van is very important in Singapore. So yeah, um... So just so you know, are there companies that are founded during major problems? Um, yes. In fact, Alibaba was a new bit. You know, Alibaba was a startup in 2003 that became an internet giant because of the SARS outbreak. So I'm sharing to you that um, the chart ni Alibaba. But the SARS epidemic, uh, this is an article you want to read. This came from CNBC. The SARS epidemic threatened Alibaba's survival in 2003. Here's how it made it through to become a $470 billion company. We think that Alibaba can become a trillion dollar company. Now, 18 years ago, meaning in 2002 to 2003, SARS outbreak, Jack Ma has been forced to stay at home. Stay home, stay home. With approximately 500 employees, they got, uh, they got a SARS. Yung employee nila nagkaroon ng SARS, so hindi sila pwede magkahawaan. 12 days quarantine sila. They started to create during that time Tao Pao. Taopao, which is now the largest uh, retail uh, mall in China. So uh, it's very important that you know that even in times of crisis, this is actually when e-commerce becomes the biggest, biggest winner, which is not a surprise why all the e-commerce giants went all-time highs. Okay, so um, that is not a surprise. Okay, the SARS outbreak led to huge and exponential growth in Alibaba's business. Alibaba's business grew. 50% more during the outbreak of SARS. So Alibaba's e-commerce model has become well-known in China and globally. 2003, who knew who's Taobao? 2020, now everybody knows Alibaba. Yan. So uh, in 2003, Alibaba was even trying to fight the e-commerce giant at that time, which was eBay. Wala pa, hindi pa sobrang magaling si Amazon during that time. So can you imagine how things fly by in 17 years? What, what could happen with Tencent in 17 years? Can $10 become $170? Tingin mo. So yun. Um, in fact, uh, this is very important. No? Noong May 5, 2003, when Taobao was launched, that's the time they launched it. Right now, every May 5, they call it the Ali Day. So actually, three days ago, they celebrated the Ali Day. Just to remember that time when they all had the SARS outbreak and how Alibaba pushed through, how they survived the SARS crisis. Kaya yung coronavirus, they are saying, even Jack Ma was saying, and I'll read this open letter to you. If an individual or even a company is to achieve its extraordinary mission, it must endure, overcome difficulties and challenges. When the memory of SARS quietly faded in our minds, the Alibaba spirit of decisiveness, solidarity, dedication, mutual assistance, and love has manifested in a course of fighting against SARS, lasted forever, whether or not in person, after experiencing that critical moment. They were deeply moved, inspired by the miracles created by Alibaba's employees. Now, those who perceive SARS as a challenge, Jack Ma said never. During the SARS period, no one should think of this an opportunity. In fact, we should think what people are encountering, the obstacles, and how we can do our best effort to help them. It's not an opportunity, but your responsibility to serve the community. Therefore, today, we're facing coronavirus. I've seen this. Uh, Shopify has, you know, how Shopify has helped brick-and-mortar retailers, how Shopee and Lazada can help all the brick-and-mortar retailers, how Food Panda has been helping all the restaurants, all these e-commerce companies have a mission to serve the community. And so I believe that everyone now uh, should learn that um, when you're facing coronavirus, learn from the giants, learn from them that in a crisis, it's your responsibility to think how to serve the community. So can you remember this? Lahat sila nagpe-face mask then. In 2003, Alibaba was once obscure. But they came on top of the food chain because they had a good management. They know what to do in a crisis. And uh, of course, history will repeat itself. Right now, Alibaba's story is a 
Uh, right now, Alibaba is going to a cloud uh, cloud move. So uh, we're still also bullish in Alibaba. This is not a topic to call to talk about Alibaba. This is a Shopee. Uh, this is a Shopee SE play. Pero I, I figured we'd we'd like to share these great companies. Good. I ended six thirty. Okay. I hope that all of you learned a lot. Um, I wanted to share more. But if you really want to learn more, just go to cgroup.com. You can see more about the management, who's Forrest Lee, who's Gang Ye, who's David Chen, Tony Ho, you know, Chris Fung, Yan Sun Wang, Nok, Terry. Be inspired by these giants. And I want this uh, class that you just don't know about the companies. You don't just trade them. You don't just, um, you know, just because you made money on Shopee doesn't mean that Okay, tapos na ako. But you need to really know what's the story, no? Um, to end my point, no, go to our awesome10x.com. Uh, we have a lot of products. We have a global investment core training. We have the inner circle. We have stock picks. You can go to the website, awesome10x.com. Um, you can view our products while we're doing this. Uh, to end my pitch, you know, the best way to grow the bottom line of your business is to help the bottom line of a thousand investors. So really, I hope that this class helped you and learned a lot. So continue to learn more. And this ends my presentation. Shopee SE C Limited, the Peranakan version of Tencent. Have you connected the dots? I hope you did. Thank you.